of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. We're here today to do an outreach ministry to lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. We did not come out here to condemn nobody. We just come to let you know that God loves you. See, the Bible says, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. See, I found that when Jesus came into the world, thank you, Lord, he came that men might have life and have it more abundantly. When I found out this life that he want to give you is life for your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. See, you have an outward man and you have an inward man. And the Bible says, though our outward man perish, our inward man is renewed from day to day. Well, he came to bring life for that inward man. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sweet name. So that way that life... Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sweet name that he want to give you is that Holy Ghost and fire. Yes, Lord. Bless your sweet name. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ that believe in the outpouring of the Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. This is the church that believe in demonstrating spirit and power. Yes, Lord. Bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. See, when God came inside our life, he made a change. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. He began to manifest himself to us. And we came in contact with a knowledge. Thank you, Lord. Bless your name. That caused us to grow every single day. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sweet name. See, this knowledge that we came in contact with, thank you, Lord. Bless your name. It's priceless. It's better than rubies and golds and diamonds. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sweet name. And we got it all for free at the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. See, I found that when Jesus Christ began to minister, he wasn't preaching for no money. He wasn't concerned about that. The Bible says, fox have holes and birds have nests. But the Son of Man have nowhere to lay his head. Well, one thing about it, Jesus Christ was caring about the soul of man. He began to preach the gospel to every living creature. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. He also began to raise up men and teach them how to go out and witness. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Trying to convert somebody that way they can start trusting in his Father. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Well, it's the same spirit that we're dealing with, the same spirit that Jesus gave his disciples, the same one that came down the day of Pentecost. That's the same spirit we're in fellowship with today. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. And we're here to let you know that every man, woman, boy, and girl can come in contact with a spirit that will rest on the inside of you. See, I'm going to let you know when Jesus Christ began to let the people know about being born again, he was speaking of this spiritual life that you put on your soul. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. I found that you could be living naturally. Yes, Lord, going about working at nine to five. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. You might be a stay-at-home mom at the house all day with your kids. Yes, Lord, you might feel like that's a life that you're living. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sweet name. But have you ever been introduced to that spiritual life? Well, that life begin to rest upon your inward man. Yes, Lord, bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. And this life begin to cause you to be a new creature in Christ. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. This life begin to give you a mind to love the Lord your God with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. But that life is for the inward man. Yes, Lord, bless your name. Thank you, Jesus. See, Jesus Christ told the people, he said, fear not man, they can destroy the body. He said, after that, there's no more that he can do. But rather fear him, they can destroy both soul and body. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. The apostle Paul, when he came on the scene, he began to let the people know that our, our man perish, our inward man is renewed from day to day. He also stated another place inside the Bible. He said to depart from this body is to be present with the Lord. So I'm going to let you know today you have an inward man. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sweet name. This outward man, it just houses the inward man. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. But one thing I know Jesus came to do is came to seek and save those that was lost. Yes, Lord, that way your soul, it can be with God when you die and pass out this natural life. We wouldn't put on this earth to live forever. The Bible say once it's appointed for a man to die. After this is the judgment. Thank Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. We all go face death at some point in this life. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sweet name. I'm not talking about the end of the world type of stuff. I'm talking about in your natural life that you living. Yes, Lord, it's going to end one day. But I got news for you. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. Jesus came to rest on your inward man. That way your soul can be received by the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Thank you, Lord. Bless your sweet name, Jesus. This is an outreach ministry. Come trying on, to build up the minds of people. Trying to give somebody some hope. Yeah, yes, Lord, Lord. bless your name. I 
understand we living in a day and time where there's a lot of people that are struggling inside their mind, not knowing if God is real or not. Yes, Lord, bless your name. That's why God got service with testimonies so we can go out there and let people know about the goodness of God or how he came inside our life and made a change. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. See, you listen to a man that wasn't raised in church. I didn't know nothing about God the first 21 years of my life, but I'm going to tell you, God came and started dealing with my conscience. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. It's not something somebody came and told me. It's not something that I read inside a book. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. But he started talking right there to my mind. Yes, Lord. Bless your sweet name. Thank you, Jesus. And when he gave those instructions, I found myself talking right back to him, saying, if you want me to read the Bible, teach me how to read. Yes, Lord. Bless your name. Well, that's how God came to me. What about you and your life? Have you got a witness from God? Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. You might not understand what I'm all, what I, everything that I'm saying right now, but I'm going to let you know somewhere. I know God got to be dealing with the minds of people, but you might not be familiar with the voice of God. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. See, God say he speak once, yea, twice in a dream or a vision. Yes, Lord, there's multiple ways that God begin to communicate with the soul of man, but some people are not familiar with the voice of God. There was a man named Samuel when he was a little child. He wasn't familiar with that voice either. God began to call his name. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. But by him being unfamiliar with the voice of God, he thought it was a natural being that was calling him. So he got up out his bed and he went to Eli and began to talk to Eli and say, have you called me? Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. And he started to let him know, I have not called you. When the Bible said it's happened three times and on the third time, Eli perceived that God was calling Samuel. So he told him, go back and lay down. If you hear that voice again, you say, speak for your servant heareth. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. What about you out there today? Are you familiar with the voice of God? Don't you know he be dealing with the minds of people? Yes, Lord, bless your name. Just in case you are unfamiliar with the voice, I'm going to let you know he's trying to tell you that he love you with a great love. See, Samuel had to come in contact with somebody that had knowledge of God. Yes, Lord, bless your name. Well, it's got, it got to be somebody out here lacking that knowledge for God to send his servants out. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. So we're here to tell you that God love you with a great love. And it's not his will that none should perish. It's not his will that none should perish because he love you. That's why he sent the son to die for you. His son was a sacrifice for the sins of the world. Thank you, Jesus. That's how much God love you. He loved you so much that he sent the son and gave his son a mind to lay down, lay down his life for you and I. See, one thing I know, Jesus Christ didn't have no sin. He went about doing good, healing the sick, making the lame to walk. He went about casting out devils. He went about loving his neighbor as he loved himself. No hatred, no guile, no envy, no strife was found in him. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. He had a mission that he was on, and that mission was to keep himself spotless. That way he could be that highest sacrifice. Because the Bible began to let me know when they offered up them calves, when they offered up them lambs, when they offered up them natural beasts, the Bible said that can do nothing to the pertaining of the conscience. He said it took a higher sacrifice. It took God sending his only begotten son, made of a woman, made under the law, to redeem them that was under the law. But see, it was not just for them. It was also for you and I. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. See, I'm going to let you know about a man named Cornelius. He began to pray. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. And he was considered a Gentile. He was not a Jew, but he began to pray, and he made a connection with an angel, and this angel started talking to him, told him, send men to Joppa. Yes, Lord, bless your name. Go look for Peter. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. And he's going to tell you what you got to do. Yes, Lord, bless your name. And here come the Spirit of God dealing with Peter in a whole nother region and he was praying at the hour of prayer. Thank you Jesus. Bless your sweet name. And he fell inside a trance and he saw these wild beasts, four-footed beasts, creeping things of the air. Yes, Lord, the ground falls in the air. Yes, Lord, bless your name. And the voice spoke out to him and said, rise, Peter, kill and eat. But he said, not so, Lord. I have never eaten anything common or unclean. Why? Because he was a Jew and they had a custom that they had to follow. Yes, Lord, but God wasn't 
wasn't speaking about a natural beast because God is the spirit. When he show you something, there's a spiritual interpretation that comes with it. But Peter didn't know. But God started dealing with him and started letting him know it's men going to come to you. Yes, Lord, go with these men. Don't doubt nothing. Why? Because God was going to introduce them Gentiles unto salvation. So when Peter went with them men over there to Cornelius' house, yes, Lord, bless your name, Peter started preaching the word of God. And the Bible said the Holy Ghost fell on all them that heard the word. So I'm going to let you know today, if you want to experience the word of God, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, we preach the word in season, out of season. And if you want the Holy Ghost to fall upon you, we got service tomorrow night at 7.30 p.m. in Splendor, Texas, 26579 Dallas Sioux Street, Splendor, Texas. We'll be preaching the word. If you want to experience the Holy Ghost like Cornelius and his household did, you can experience it right there. And when the Bible said the Holy Ghost fell upon them, the Bible said they start speaking in tongues, magnifying God. Uh. Why was they magnifying God? Because there's something about the Spirit of God when it comes inside your soul. You want to give thanks and glory and honor to the great God of heaven for pouring out the gift of the Holy Ghost because it's a gift. Yes, Lord, bless your name. It was freely given to them. Why? Because their heart was open. Yes, Lord, bless your name. They was praying and seeking the Lord and the Lord came and rewarded them openly. So I understand it might be somebody out here that might pray. Some of y'all probably somewhere praying, wanting a closer walk with Jesus. There's somebody out here going to a church and they feel that they worshiping God for what they have and what they know. But they searching for more and they seeking. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. And what did God do? He sent a service out to bid you to the marriage supper of the Lamb because God got a feast that's set up, that's already prepared. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. And he's trying to invite you into the marriage supper of the Lamb. That way you can dine with the Lord. See, it's something he want to feed your soul. That way your soul can rejoice and give glory and honor. The same way Cornelius did when they received the Holy Ghost. They begin to bless the God of heaven. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. That's what this church is all about. We don't care about no money. We don't preach for money. We preach soul salvation. The Bible said, for man don't work, neither shall he eat. We got our own jobs. We don't beg for money. We don't even like accepting money. Yes, Lord, bless your name. Money not the answer to your soul. But if you want to know the answer to the salvation of the soul of man, it's Jesus Christ. Over there in the book of John chapter 14, verse 6, he said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. No man can come unto God but by him. He is the door unto the sheepfold. If any come up another way, the same will be a thief and a robber, but God don't want you to be a thief and a robber. He wants you to go right there through Jesus. Jesus Christ is the mediator between God and man. That's the man Christ Jesus. If you want salvation, Jesus got it. If you want love, Jesus got it. If you want a peace of mind, I know where you can find it. It's all in Jesus. Everything you need. Yes, Lord, bless your name. It's right there in the Son of God. But see, the world program people to make them feel like all they need is a job. All they need is a good career. All they need is a good companion. And that's what the world project upon the soul of man. And, and, and you waste all your time trying to accumulate all the money you can. You waste all your time going and seeking for love in all the wrong places. When the love that you really need to seek is the love that came from above. Yes, Lord, that love that never faded. The love that, that don't come with conditions. That love, yes, Lord, that surpasses all understanding. That's the love you got to come up with. And that's the love of God, which is the Holy Ghost and fire. See, this is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. A church that's really sold out. We'd have been out there and experienced just by any and everything you can think of and name. But we found out, bless your sweet name, that never satisfied our soul. We didn't try out the clubs, we didn't try out the drinks, we didn't try out the alcohol, we didn't did the women, the men, all these different things. 
Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. Yes, Lord, we done worked the jobs and made the money. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. But one thing about it, it never brought no true satisfaction to our soul. Our soul was still seeking something. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. And your soul is searching, and you might not know. Yes, Lord, bless your name, that your inward man is looking for something. But by you not knowing, you start looking at all these different avenues. Yes, Lord, bless your name, seeking for something that's going to satisfy you. But one thing I know, when Jesus met that Samaritan woman at the well of Jacob, he let her know this water, you're going to thirst again. That means you're not going to be satisfied by it because you're going to always want more of it. You're going to always want to come back and draw some water. But he started letting her know about some water that could be in you where you can draw from within. That way, whenever you need it, you can go right there within and get it. But this water wasn't talking about natural water that he was speaking about. Let's keep in mind God is a spirit. And they that worship him got to worship in spirit and in truth. There's no other way around it. So that water that he want to give you is the Holy Ghost and fire, which is everlasting life. There's so many people got a misconception of what everlasting life is, what salvation is. They think that don't take place until you die and pass on. But I'm going to tell you right now today, you can come in contact with salvation right now. Yes, Lord, bless your name. And, the, and all those that don't believe in salvation, that's because you haven't had that encounter with the Lord for yourself. But I guarantee you, if you try the spirit that we're in fellowship with, you will come in contact with that salvation. And I'm going to let you know that salvation is designed to set the soul of man free. Yes, Lord, the bless your name. And the Bible says, who the son set free, he'll be free indeed. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sweet name. I don't know nothing out there in the world that can set you free. Yes, so they get all kind of laws around the land that will bound you up. Some of y'all bound to your jobs. Some of y'all bound to your spouse. Some of y'all bound to y'all kids. Yes, Lord, bless your name. Some of y'all bound to education. Thank you, Jesus. Nothing out there that has set you free. But I know Jesus, he has set the captive free. He done it over and over and over again. Yes, Lord, bless your name. And I know he not done setting somebody free. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. You might be struggling with some type of addiction. Don't feel ashamed. Yes, Lord, come over here and get prayer. I know the power of God can set you free. Some of y'all might be battling with porno. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. Can't take your eyes off of it. I know somebody that can set you free. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. Some of y'all seeking, looking for somebody to help you provide for yourself. I know somebody that'll take care of you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sweet name. And I know some of y'all inside Walmart shopping for gifts. Because you getting ready for this December 25th. But I know somebody that can give you a gift that'll never get old, that'll never fade away, and you ain't got to pay for it. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. He can give it to every man, woman, boy, and girl that open up their heart. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sweet name. Because I know most of y'all people out here believe in Christmas some shape, form, or fashion. Some of y'all believe it's Jesus Christ's birthday. Some of y'all believe it's just a day that we can come together and have a spiritual conversation amongst each other as family. Yes, Lord, some of y'all take that opportunity to have family time. Yes, Lord, some of y'all say it's Xmas. Some of y'all got all kind of things you're going to say. But one thing I know, you ain't going to be working that day. And you're going to be gathered somewhere swapping gifts. Why not come in contact with the gift of the Holy Ghost? Because that's exactly what it is. That's what Peter called it. He said, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Well, this gift don't get old. This gift don't get old. And you ain't got to pay for it. Somebody already paid the price. Somebody already died and suffered so many things in this natural life. Somebody hung up on the cross for six hours. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. Somebody received thorns in his head, lashes on his back. Thank you, Jesus, bless your name. Somebody was crucified. Yes, Lord, just so you can come in contact with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Yes, Lord, don't let the Lord pass you by. Don't take it for granted that we out here. You might not understand what's being said, and I, I understand that. But your soul is precious under God. And there's no way he can send his servants out to a place where somebody is not crying out. Yes, Lord, somebody looking for a better way. I understand this way not for everybody. 
Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. But one thing I do know is God, he look for those that's really tired of the world and want a better way. I know God looking for somebody, yes, Lord, that's tired of going to church and playing church. I'm tired of this, this, this religious uh, belief that I'm believing. I'm tired of being bound by customs and traditions of men. Yes, Lord, somebody out there want to be set free from that. Somebody reading a Bible, not understanding what it's talking about, but you keep asking the Lord for understanding. Well, there's no other church that I know that can give you an understanding of what the book talking about other than the church of the Lord Jesus Christ, because that's the only church that's found inside the Bible. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. So you got to ask yourself, where did all these other churches come from? Yes, Lord, if there's only one church that Jesus Christ started, and it was not the Baptist church, his church was not called Pentecost. That was the day of Pentecost when they received the Holy Ghost. His church is not called Catholic. It's not called Apostolic. Yes, Lord, or Apostolic, whatever you want to call it. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. His church is called by his name, and his name is Jesus. So you can call it the church of the Lord Jesus Christ because he's the one that established his church on the day of Pentecost, which was the feast day. Yes, Lord, where them Jews always gathered and they had a feast. But this day, the Holy Ghost, it came upon all these men and they began to be witnesses to all the people that was gathered around. That was the church being established in the heart of the people. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your sweet name. And that's Jesus, the one that established it. Because I'm telling you, his church, you're going to have power over the gates of hell. You're gonna have power over sin. You're gonna have power inside your mind to resist the devil. But if you go to all these lukewarm churches, they gonna tell you you have no choice but to sin. Why? They wanna keep you in bondage, but they gonna tell you God loves you anyways. All you gotta do is believe, and they wanna make you feel as good as possible because the better you feel, the more generous, generous you will be handing out your money. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. You don't think them false prophets getting a sermon together so they can get as much money as they can about you coming this weekend. Yes, Lord, bless your name. Some of y'all going to spend more money inside the church than you do for your own family. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. But what about coming to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ where we don't preach no money. We preach soul salvation. We don't pass our collection plates inside the church. We ain't got time for that. Why? Because souls got to be saved and money can't save nobody. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. If you look around, money depreciated so much, it lost its value. That's why we don't care about it. Thank you, Jesus. Bless your name. What we care about is seeing somebody say. And that's why we lift up our voice. We got another minister going to testify and lift up the name of Jesus. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be afraid to come over here and worship with us. I know most people out here go to somebody's church. When we going to get to the point where we stop letting church be a divider, and keeping people separate from worshiping with one another. But we all say we serve God. We all say we love Jesus. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. Why not come together and fellowship and reason amongst each other so we can all come to one understanding? The Bible let me know that Paul said well, he would, that we all speak the same thing, that there be no division amongst you. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. He want us all to come to the same knowledge. That way we can understand who God is and what he consists of. Because without the knowledge of God, yes, Lord, bless your name, some people going to die and perish. But he said it's not his will that none should perish. So what did God do? He put forth the church inside the land to build your mind up that way you can serve him in spirit and in truth. He don't want it no other way. Yes, Lord, bless your name, lies can't save you. And if you making lies your refuse, you already got a spot in the lake of fire. But see, we out here trying to save somebody from the wrath to come to Jesus. While you got time, while you got blood running warm in your veins, think about your soul today. You only got one. Yes, Lord, don't let the world take your soul from you. Stand up and fight for it. Let somebody break off into your house and you in there. You gonna try to fight for your belongings. Some of y'all gonna fight to the death. Let somebody mess with your kids. Some of y'all gonna fight to the finish. 
Why not fight for your own soul like that, your soul salvation? Don't just drive by salvation. Why not stop and hear what the Lord trying to say to your soul? The Spirit of God speaking today. Do you have an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying? The Spirit is saying he want every man, woman, boy, and girl to serve him with all their heart, mind, soul, and strength and be a light to somebody that's out there in need. That somebody need to see a true example of people really living the Bible. People tired of hearing preachers preach the word and then get caught in the act of adultery. People getting tired of hearing preachers preach the word and they leave out the church not understanding what in the world going on. All they know is they had a hundred dollars in their pocket and they left out with 20. Yes, Lord, bless your sweet name. Thank you, Jesus. People tired of hearing the same old gospel that's not doing nothing to their soul. If you want your soul to rejoice in the truth, come on out to the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to say this one more time. We got another minister. Let's go minister. But if we don't, I'll keep on going. Well, go ahead. I'll keep on going. Yes, Lord. Bless your name. Souls. A few songs. It's going to glorify the Lord. This is the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. A church that really cares about the soul of man. We're not out here doing our arms before man so we can get glory for no man. We're trying to help the soul of man understand and know that they soul is precious unto God. And you only got one. You don't want to die and lose your soul. You want to make sure you come in contact with everlasting life while you're still alive today. Get paid for doing a half done job. You won't get paid for doing a half done job. So you might as well make up your mind. Serving Jesus is surely fine. You won't get paid for doing a half done job. You won't get paid for starting and stopping in God. You won't get paid for starting and stopping in God. So you might as well make up your mind. Serving Jesus is surely fine. You won't get paid for starting and stopping in God. Well, God is a spirit, a spirit, yes, indeed. You got to keep on pressing, keep on praying. He'll provide your every need. If you stick with him, he'll stick with you. It makes no difference what you're going through. You won't get paid for doing a half done job. You won't get paid for doing a half done job. You won't get paid for doing a half done job. So you might as well make up your mind. Serving Jesus is surely fine. You won't get paid for doing a half done job. Well, God is a spirit, a spirit, yes, indeed. You got to keep on pressing, keep on praying. He'll provide your every need. If you stick with him, he'll stick with you. Makes no difference what you're going through. You won't get paid for doing a half done job. You won't get paid for starting and stopping in God. You won't get paid for starting and stopping in God. So you might as well make up your mind. You might as well make up your mind. Serving Jesus is surely fine. You won't get paid for starting and stopping in God. You won't get paid for starting and stopping in God. You won't get paid for starting and stopping in God. So you might as well make up your mind. Might as well make up your mind. You might as well make up your mind. Serving Jesus is surely fine. Serving Jesus is surely fine. You won't get paid for doing a half done job. Well, God is the spirit. A spirit, yes, indeed. You got to keep on pressing. Keep on praying. He'll provide your every need. If you stick with him, he'll stick with you. Makes no difference what you're going through. You won't get paid for doing a half done job. You won't get paid for doing a half done job. You won't get paid for doing a half done job. So you might as well make up your mind. Serving Jesus is surely fine. You won't get paid. Doing a half-done job. Very best I can. Wanna make it to heaven, but still ain't going in. Without holiness, no man shall see the Lord. I had to make up my mind. Tell me what you're gonna do. No, this is not a game that little children play. Hey, uh, that comes to robbers play. Your soul is precious. Your soul is precious. 